Hi everybody. I did a review last year, I think it was last year, for this little benchtop power supply, the 9616 PS made by MPJA. It's also rebranded something else too. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. But the voltage and amperage adjustments on it were starting to go bad. And when I opened it up, I found out why. What do you expect for 50, 60 bucks or so? It doesn't use rotary encoders. It's just using cheap little potentiometers. So I ended up going on eBay and I bought some replacements. I think it was like 550 shipped or so for three of each. There's two 10K pots and then two 1K pots on this board. So we're going to go ahead and replace those so this way I can get correct adjustment again, put it back together, and then we'll fine tune. There's two little blue trim pots here. So we'll have to hook it up to the multimeter and see if we can get it really close to what it should be. And while I have it apart, I also already added on to the front of the display this little port down here. It's an extra banana plug next to your positive and negative. That goes inside the case and is connected to earth ground. Reason being is it's the middle of winter and I'm shocking everything because the air is dry. It doesn't matter how much I run a humidifier. So this way I can take an anti-static strap, throw it on myself real quick, and plug it right on in. And now I got an earth ground and I won't destroy all my electronics because I'm busy running my feet over the floor. So what I'm going to end up doing here is try to clean up enough space so I can actually work here first. Um, looks like from the way they come from the factory, or at least from eBay, they use uh, little straight ports. Let's see if you can see it like that. Well, this is going to be a bit of a modification because the originals actually have these little legs that go down and they're a through hole part. Well, the ones I got from eBay, they stick straight up. So I ended up taking one, bending the ports on down, or the pins on down, so they get really close. They're the exact same physical size, but the legs won't actually reach into the circuit board. So what I'll end up doing is cutting off the three original legs and reusing those legs. Now it'll work perfectly if I just sit it right over top of it and solder right onto those legs. It'll give me a nice solid connection. Yes, I have kids. One of these days I'm going to remember to change this tip to an actual chisel instead of the point. I keep on forgetting to do that before I warm it up. Especially for something that's through hole like this. Chisel tip would help a lot more. Ah, I let go too fast. It wasn't done setting. There we go. I was a little too quick on that one. There you go. All fixed. Four new potentiometers on here. Let's go ahead and put it back in the unit and partially put the unit back together. And since I kind of forgot to show you the teardown part of this because I kind of delved into it too quickly, if you try taking off your panel right here, there's four screws in the back of it that hold it on plus this cable, but at the same time, you got to pull off the knobs which are really hard the first time. Oh my God, they were, I thought I was gonna break the whole thing. But now they come on and off fairly easy. But there's also a, uh, a nut underneath here that you basically are gonna get with pliers. You can't get a socket or anything in there. So it takes a few seconds to get it apart. So make sure once you take off the four back screws on the circuit board, you don't just try ripping the circuit board off or you're gonna rip off the potentiometers right off the circuit board. Now one quick mention, which I'm not changing out today because I don't have a replacement right now. This little 470 farad 50 volt rated Wetrolytic capacitor is on your output positive and negative to filter out the noise from the uh, DC converter, the AC to DC converter. Um, supposedly they are crap, so there's probably a fair amount of noise on the outputs on these. I don't have a scope yet. I haven't gotten around to buying one or getting the money up for one, so I can actually see. But if you're going to open it up, Chances are it's probably a good idea to put a better quality cap in here. Check this out, people. There's two little potentiometers in the back. They sell this in a 3-amp and a 5-amp model. This is the 3-amp model. That's cheaper. 
if you take your meter on 10 amp setting real quick normally it will crank up let me crank this all the way the other direction again and you crank it all the way up I get about 3.33 amps out of it but if you take the potentiometer back here crank it all the way the other way guess what you get 5 amps you just saved yourself $15 now after playing with this for a little while we have the two blue always straight down there the little trim pots those adjust the voltage and amperage from the uh, trim pots itself and as we see if you adjust the amperage all the way up you can make this into a 5 amp power supply quite easily now to actually um, zero out or get the display a little more accurate on the back of it I'm not sure if I can get this in here correctly you'll see very top here let me see if I can put this down and point to it right up here you got RP1 and RP2 they're little tiny trim pots up here apparently RP1 adjusts your amperage and that's how I got it down to 0 0.01 milliamp showing and RP2 we're going to adjust right now which is should uh, help um, calibrate the voltage a little bit better let's get the 12 volts on this and then we'll adjust this meter Eight, nine. Oop, a little bit further down. Okay, that's exactly 12 volts. And I'm actually reading exactly 12 volts. Okay, so how far off is it then? So 12.1. Still like a half a volt off. See, at 12.6, we're reading 12.1. So we've got to adjust it down a little bit. I'm not sure which way it's down. It should be this way. Oh, that's up. Okay, other way. Turn it clockwise to bring it down. One, two. Okay, now let's see where we cross over to 12.1 at. Okay, about 12. Yeah, you know what? Honestly, I can. I'm not gonna play with it right there. I can live with that ever so slightly being off so let's recap i took my one year old power supply put a earth ground on it so i can hook up to a anti-static strap i replaced all four of the potentiometers in here so i get correct adjustments again instead of being jumpy and having dead spots we on the back of the circuit board for this we found the voltage and uh, amperage adjustments now the voltage I dropped down from 30 to 25 volts, so it will work a little bit better for me. It's not quite as sensitive and I can get finer tuning on my voltage. The amperage, we found out that's a nice quick little hack right there. Because if you can see on the front of here, this says 0 to 3 amps. This sold for about $55 brand new. Um, there's also a 5 amp version. Apparently the difference between the two of them... That little blue potentiometer, the little pot inside there for the amperage, was turned all the way down, which gives you just over 3 amps. Guess what? Turn it all the way up. You get exactly 5 amps out of this unit. That unit sells for $99. That's the only difference. So there's a quick little hack. Two extra amps for a quick little turn. And the only thing we didn't do was change out that little blue capacitor, the little filter capacitor that goes on your positive and negative lines in here. So I didn't have one available right now. But after reading through the forums, uh, it's an iffy cap, so I probably should change it out one of these days. Once I get around to it, I'll pull apart some old electronics and see if I can find a half-decent replacement capacitor. So if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below.